Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure being tonight with all of you. Thank you for all the people that they are start, uh, following us and also people that they are watching us. I can see Abhijit here, Elsvieta also that, well, uh, Elsvieta is practicing her Spanish. So, well, well done, Whitney, because, well, now she's putting buenas noches a todos. Well, buenas noches, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Latin America show. And, well, as always, I would like to ask you to share this video in order that more people, they know what the Latinos we are doing around the world. And also not only the Latinos, I think it's the Latin American culture and all the people that they are engaged with Latin America. As you know, we have had people from Europe, people from US, people that they are across the world showing us their expertise and how they are contributed or linked to Latin America. And this is exactly one of the occasions because tonight, we're going to have a tenor that also he's based in um, in Germany. And, well, Rafael is going to tell us about what is he, what is he doing there in Germany. But anyway, and also we're going to have music. We are going to enjoy music of our friend Adrian Garcia. But before we start, well, I would like to say hello to mis amigos. With me, Nuchireno. Hola a todos, so buenas noches. It does look like night. I'm looking outside my window and it's so dark. It's a little depressing, but we have this show to lift our spirits up. So I'm ready whenever you are. Not depressive, Whitney. It's London and it's <laughs> summer is over. So that's the I'm only still thing, in morning. As a teacher, this is a very depressing time for me. <laughs> why? But why? I have to go back to work. <laughs> ah, okay. So it's okay. So it's not because it's dark. It's because no, you have it to go is. back it to just, work. It's just making it worse. The dark makes it worse. <laughs> and then the cold weather soon too. So it's just like piling up, you know? Okay. Well, after that yes. boost of mood that Whitney <laughs> has provided us tonight, <laughs> I want to say hello yeah. to Roger Alcon. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Well, it's a pleasure to be here and then a pleasure to all of our followers seeing this uh, a magnificent show i need to say something great after whitney just sent mr sun for a holidays of <laughs> six seven months of holidays yes but anyway i'm glad to be here well last week we have a interesting week because well it's like uh, we have a lot of celebrations and you know that well as as we said before uh i think so since July, June, I think so July, till September, October, we have a lot of independence days yes. across Latin America. So, well, mm -hmm. of course we were celebrating, as you remember, we celebrate the independence of Colombia, the 20th of July. Also, we celebrate two weeks ago, Brazil. Uh, Chile was last week also, yeah, yeah. as Costa Rica, I think so, Mexico and some other countries that they are in Latin America, in Central America, as That's El Salvador. Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua. Yeah, and I think El Salvador, right? I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. So all of them, they the 15th of September, 16th. Mm -hmm. and, and well, it's like continue with this celebration. Hopefully you have a good time and you have the opportunity now that well, the lockdown is a little bit, well, we don't have a lockdown practically. So we have the opportunity to enjoy, to gather with friends, and to travel but anyway so how did you spend the well you have been quite busy Roger did you have a good week yeah I mean it's been very busy for me I was then uh, doing the Independence Day um, from Mexico during the, the, the celebration Brixton and also with the embassy it was doing something with them and also it was doing uh, the press launch from Raindance Film Festival which in a few uh, programs we're gonna talk about it and yeah, I mean, I've done a few concerts as well. Yesterday I did one, uh, the, the guitarist from Genesis is now doing a solo opera, opera rock. It was fantastic. Well, it's, it's London is live, London is open, but let me tell you something, be responsible. Because I, I, every time I go to a show, I need to say, well, because it's requirement, I do my flow test. You can go and check your flow test. You go to the pharmacy and they give it for free. So please do it at least once a week. So, you know, you're safe. 
Yeah. Correct. And not only you, it's like you are maintaining all people that they are surrounding you. That of they course, are safe. of course. Yeah. And yeah, actually, you know what? Um, well, also in the poll party that well we had last last week, uh, we are in a group of Mexicans on WhatsApp and we were showing our proof that well we were like COVID free. So well, just yeah, it's time. it's just people say, oh no, it's, it, you need to do it. But if you do, you take care of yourself, you take care of your friends and you take care of all London, be open and not close again. So please do it. It's very simple to do it. And I encourage everyone, please do it. So we can have restaurants, bars, uh, live music still open. Especially if you're going into work a lot. Like I go in every day. So we do flow test twice a week and guys just because you don't have symptoms doesn't mean you don't have it so just take the test it takes a few minutes it's unpleasant but we want to stay open that's correct yeah. and and also well the normal duty is like remember that you can follow us uh, on facebook instagram twitter and youtube if you subscribe to youtube remember to put the bell also if you're watching here on facebook also it has like a bell there so you will know every time that we're uh, broadcasting or uploading a new video to be on YouTube or it could be here on um, on Facebook. Remember to share with your friends. And I think so it's time. Well, I would like to say thank you and hello to Katia Waters that she's here. She was the winner of uh, last week of uh, these two nights um, in Riviera Nayarit. So congratulations, Katia. And well, let's go over you, Whitney. Yes, best section ever, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so while my colleagues put their microphones in mute, um, we're going to do the first part of making Spanish simple. As you know, we divide it now into two segments to keep it, you know, fresh. And tonight, since the main, without spoiling too much of the interview, the main topic is about music. And I want us to relearn some of the basic words we've seen over a year ago when I first presented them because I was going through my notes and then along with a few new words because that's what we do when we're getting in back in the swing of things. So here we go. Let me just get them up. I'm still getting used to this again. Okay. So like I said, we are doing La Musica and you're going to see in our following interview that is music, but we also see the word musica when we're talking about a musician. It could be El Musico La Musica if we're talking about um, a female musician. We talked about how in one of the last episodes, how there are a lot of words to say, like a musical group. We talked about la banda, we talked about el grupo musical or a grupo, or, and this is a new word, el conjunto musical. So conjunto could be like an outfit, but el conjunto musical is like a group because it all goes together, blends in, it goes nicely. And then a couple other new words, orquesta, no R and no second R um, means orchestra in case, you know, you want to learn that word in case we're talking about that kind of music. I know before we talked about generos de musica and then una sinfonia. This is very similar to orquesta in the sense that it is a cognate. It is what it looks like. And we like those words because we can identify them very easily for us Anglophone speakers. So now is audience participation time and Roger and Rike, pay attention because you will be participating as well. Um, I want to talk about, we've done what's my favorite genre of music um, before, but this one is about concierto. So un concierto is a concert. And the question is, ¿Cuál fue tu primer concierto? What was your first concert, like ever? So mi primer concierto fue, uh, what was it? Winnie Houston. <gasps> Yo tenía ocho años. Yo fui con mi papá y mi prima. Uf, buenísimo. So throw it in the comments. Mi primer concierto fue, and then put the artist. Like who was your first concert? And you're going to throw in the comments below, Enrique and Roger, you think about that might have been a long, long time ago. Maybe not. I don't know. But um, I'll get back to that in a minute. I'm going to keep this open for a second so people can participate. And I want to talk about this verb very, very quickly. This is a total teacher moment. Last week, the question was, um, where was it? Um, 
¿A dónde fuiste de vacaciones? Where did you go? Fuiste. So fuiste and fue comes from this verb, two verbs actually, it's really weird. Um, and it's in the past, we call it the preterite. And last week it was, where did you go on holiday? ¿A dónde fuiste de vacaciones? And that it meant ir. But this one comes from the verb ser. So this is a verb you're, you might see often. And in the past tense, it shares, it, it looks the same. And it's all a matter of context. In this case, because after it said tu primer concierto, we know it means what was your first concert. But if it was a donde fuiste, yo fui a, then it means like where someone went, where did they go like last week. So just in case that is confusing, it is um, same verb, but has two different, well, two different verbs, same conjugation. So two different meanings, context is everything. Okay, we're gonna go back to this, throw it in the, con in the comments. I'm already seeing a couple. Um, so moving on, couple other new and review words, cantante. So a lot of people think because the verb is cantar, I don't know why, but like this really common error with singer is cantador amongst many students of mine, not just Anglo students, like students who speak all these different languages. And it's el cantante or la cantante. Uh, I believe there's a movie that's called El Cantante with Mark Anthony, yeah. so that should help resolve any of those. But for, for some reason, it's a common error, so we're just going to get rid of it. And um, like I said, cantar is to sing, and la canción is song. And then we're going to be talking about tours. So una gira is like a tour, like a music tour. And then that is it as far as that. I know I'm only, this is a shorter first part of the segment because I have lots of slang. So let's go back. Como ya he dicho, mi primer concierto fue Whitney Houston. Legendary. Legendary. So vamos a ver en los comentarios. A donde, um, donde, um, ¿Cuál fue uh, su primer concierto, chicos? Okay. Um, oh, Enrique, you put it in the comments this time. Nice yeah, yeah, that's nice that's why I was time. laughing. Oh my, that's why you're laughing. Well, it's hard to see when you're laughing because I have like the slides window open. I've got my Google. Do I know, I know. Yeah, for, for laughing once, because he didn't so. have childhood. Fue parche. <laughs> what is that? Uh, uh, it's like a it's like parches. a teen 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 group oh. who is uh, famous in Spain and then in Latin America. Yeah, and I guess I was like, I think so four or five years. I guess yeah, that wild uh, one because it was no because it was for oh. children actually. You, children, you, you, we, yeah. course, you had, we were parents you, you, and everything, but it was like a concert that well actually they were a, they were a Spanish band uh, that they were going from Mexico. They were very popular in latin america and, and and of course in mexico yeah. let me do numbers you have five nah you was older than that <laughs> no 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 no. i mean listen it's I think, not okay. we are not checking age now we are just uh, practicing okay. spanish yes yes we are we are and like i said i mean like when i grew up we went to more like musical theater and theater so the fact that i could go to like a proper concert and wear jeans was astonishing to me at the age of eight i okay. remember my but first concert Sí, ¿cuál fue tu primer Michael concert? Jackson. <gasps> Dangerous. Oh, Michael Jackson, you were quite old, actually. Stadium. 1993. Let's I not think. do the age. You, you said a proper, a proper concert? Yes. Michael what Jackson, Aztec. A proper concert has fireworks. Did yours have fireworks? Or some sort of fire something? Well, yeah. I think so Dangerous before tour. that was not allowed to use fireworks. Okay, in the U.S., yeah. Or anything. Not when you yeah, are yeah. in a with okay. child with children right, never and mind everything. okay that's the american way <laughs> mi primer concierto fue green day cuando mi mamá estaba embarazada oh oh my gosh green day so, when her mom so was she was pregnant. she was listening she was in the she womb. was listening green green day yeah in the womb. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I traveled to Bermuda when I was proud. I don't know if you can, you can't do that anymore. All right. Yo recuerdo cuál fue mi, oh, no recuerdo, el pieta, perdón. No recuerdo cuál fue mi primer concierto. She doesn't remember. Uh, recuerdo. Uh, not only is it a verb co conjugate correctly, but with stem changing. Oh, this is fancy. Estaba en Polonia, ah, por supuesto, but she was in Poland, of course. And then we have Katya Waters. Mi primer concierto fue el grupo Menudi. Uh, or Menudo. Menudo. I don't know. Menudo. Yeah. Enrique is fun. Enrique well, was fun. No, but actually, <laughs> maybe you don't know that, Whitney, but you know one of the singers of that group. 
I do. Ricky Martin. Oh. <laughs> Ricky Martin comes from that group. Okay, it's like Romeo San Santos they were Puerto when Rishians. he bridged away from Aventura. Got it. Okay. It, yep. All right. So, anyways, um, thank you everyone for participating. Hold on before you, uh, I get cut off. I'm gonna do this twice now per show. It's gonna be real, really annoying, guys. And please subscribe. I'm adding materials. Okay, it's called makingspanishsimple.com. You have um, access to all of my social media and I'm gonna start posting slang on there um, and Instagram, more videos of, of Spanish and it's linked to the Latin America show. So you can catch up on old um, videos in order. So shameless plug, go to my website right now, makingspanishsimple.com and subscribe. Well, not for now. Hold on, please wait till the show finishes. No, it's okay. Go. Right <laughs> anyway, nice. thank you very you much, go. Whitney. Thank you very much for that. And yes, of course, follow Making Spanish Simple. And well, it's time to go to our first, well, our guest. Mm -hmm. And well, Rafael Montero. Rafael Montero uh, is a young Argentinian tenor whose professional base is in Germany. Rafael studied singing in the Conservatorio Nacional de Córdoba in Argentina, and then in early and chamber music at the Conservatoire in Switzerland. Rafael specialized in Renaissance Spanish and South American Baroque music, and also in romantic and contemporary chamber music from Hispanic South America. So uh, to know more about Rafael, I would like to say hello and welcome, Rafael. It's a pleasure being here with you. How are you doing? Hi, hello, guys. How are you doing? Thank you very much for the invitation to this wonderful program. And thank you for supporting the Latin American uh, people who is living in England and all over the world, right? Well, yeah, that's the, world, that's a, that's a goal. So, and yeah. well, you are one, one of them. And before we start talking more, well, to making a deep dive about who, about your career, I would like that you tell us a little bit about yourself. I have said just some highlights. Yes, you did. Well, uh, well, uh, I am an, I am a crossover. I am a crossover of different cultures, different identities, different music, different things. I was born in North Argentina in Jujuy. But my parents were Native Americans from Bolivia, Aymara and Quechua people. So in uh, North Argentina, well, Argentina is a crossover of different identities and cultures. So I was born in a very, very special part because the indigenous influence is very, very big. That is the unknown Argentina, I would say, which is totally different from Buenos Aires. And what on the tango, which is not at home in my place, but we have much more uh, traditional music, and uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, folk music, which is also known as world music. And I am a singer, I am a tenor. I'm also a teacher for Spanish. I am a cultural coach, intercultural coach. And uh, well, I am I based in Germany, in Cologne, but also in London, in Highbury. I am very, very often in London and I feel at home wherever I am because I'm a crossover. And I am bringing with me my background, my cultural background, a lot of um, a lot of different experiences in Latin America, and also a new vision of music that I would like to share with, especially in England, where I am doing mostly early music, trying to show how an authentic, well, how we live, how we experienced doing this early music in our countries, where were where the, the music that was created in our countries. Of course, in the time that the countries of itself, they didn't exist at that time. Well, that's me. Uh, well, that's, that's, an that's, a, that's an amazing uh, career, let me tell you. But I would love to ask you a, a, a simple question. And uh, how, how ins what inspired you to become a singer? Well, my family was very musical because my father is a Native American. He used to play charango. You know, charango is like a small guitar. It descends from a Baroque instrument brought from the Spaniards. 
and there was always music at home. And my mother uh, was a teacher. She was the, dire uh, the director of a school, a primary school later, but she uh, used to play the piano she sang. So we always had music at home. And also when I used to visit my grandmother, it was, was a piano. So when I was a child, I was already playing it and I was very, very curious about it. And then I discovered my voice when I was a little boy, but you know, in where I was born in North Argentina, there were no properly singing lessons. So I had to move to another city in order to, to, to study, but I also studied law. So when I moved from North Argentina, I, I moved to Cordoba, which is, uh, has the most, um, the, 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 well, one of the most important universities and it's the oldest university in Argentina, which is Cordoba. And I learned uh, law because I'm a lawyer and also singing and also languages because uh, when I was admitted at the Conservatorio Nacional, then I noticed, well, my teachers told me I had a special voice for chamber music, which I had with 17 years, I didn't know. So I began also to study German and French. Well, I had French at the school and I suddenly to be in a big city, I began to discover myself as well. I've discovered uh, other cultures, other languages, how easy it could be for me to, to learn many things. And of course, singing, which I began to, to research also in the libraries. At that time, we didn't have scans. So I had to go to the libraries in, 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 the, in the conservator, conservatory. But also uh, I began, I remember to buy a lot of CDs about opera, about Mozart, because I didn't know uh, so much about that. And then I think in three months, I, I became like an ex expert in which is op uh, opera, classical music. So I really was very, very hungry to know many things about uh, the music especially the music that my teachers in Argentina told me I could do good, which is chamber music, which is art song, you know? It's art song is, uh, there are works for a voice and piano normally, but it can be also with guitar or maybe another instrument. But also early music, uh, which I discovered also through the cities I bought in Cordoba. But at that time, Argentina was not very developed into early music, so it was, I felt somehow limited in, in the musical studies, but I could finish low and I also studied some literature, contemporary literature, which allows me to teach Spanish here in Germany and also in, in England as I had began to do it online. So I really, as I, as I, again, I'm a crossover. I am all the time doing different things and I feel good because I, I like the challenge really. That makes it like life more interesting too, because you're not probably stuck doing the same thing. And, you know, after this program, you and I are going to have to talk about contemporary literature because that's what I do too. I love it. Oh um, yeah. Give all of us some recommended reads. Um, you kind of, you've started to touch upon <laughs> my next question, but I want to get into a little bit more, particularly on the Switzerland side, because like you've said, you've trained in many prestigious conservatories, both, as you said, in Argentina and Switzerland which undoubtedly has shaped your range and style. I know you talked about being a tenor. I know you started talking about um, the chamber music, but can you elaborate a little bit more on any other genres of music and any other influence that your training might've had? Well, um, I was also a bit rebel with, I, uh, well, I, I studied music be uh, in, because um, where I come, well, in, in our conservatory, there was a classical method of singing, which is, uh, which was appreciated to have a big voice, and I don't have a big voice, so I am not like a typical big tenor like Pavarotti or with Placido Domingo, which are fantastic. But I am another kind of tenor which has a very soft, small voice, but very round. And that's why my teacher said, "Well, with your voice, you will be able to sing Mozart and the classicals." But what she didn't say, because she didn't know, it's about Baroque music and Renaissance music. That's what I. I discovered later, as you say, when I came with a scholarship to Neuchâtel in Switzerland. And uh, well, I had the wonderful teacher. She was one of the most, uh, one of the pioneers in early music in Europe is Rosa Maria Meister. And uh, she, well, it was very interesting for me because I, I, I was so hungry, as I, as I said, about to know about how is the Renaissance music, the Spanish music with vihuela, with instruments, and the Baroque music from Latin America. So she was the right person who I could really have an exchange, and she was teaching me not only, not only how to sing this music, but also the style and what is behind, what, of course, I began to research later. 
but as I say, I come from the from the traditional music because my father was doing traditional music, and uh, when I came to Europe, I discovered so many ensembles and I get got in touch with so many people who were doing baroque music and I did uh, I had also a scholarship to a festival uh, to an international uh, festival and um, seminario de musica española in Santiago de Compostela when I was very very young let's say I got in touch with the very good teachers but also with ensembles who were already doing um, Latin American baroque music and since I am Latin American and See, when I came to Germany, some people say, you look, you, you, you are Indian, you're Indio, because your face is Indio. I say, oh, and what is, what is to be an Indian? What is for you to be an Indian? And then I discovered my, I did this question for myself, what is to be an Indio? And you know, in Spanish, you, we don't say Indio. It's not nice to say that, but Germans, they, they were saying that to me. Then I began to, to do an introspective journey to myself and to my culture. And I said, well, you are very interested in Indios and in Native American cultures. So I began to sing or to specialize in um, Baroque music in Native American languages, but also pre-Hispanic music, which is not too much written. But I, as I say, I speak Quichua, Aymara because of my parents. So I really could be in touch with the many manuscripts. And uh, I learned I, at home, of course, with my father, with my grandparents, that music. And suddenly I discovered that for, for me as a performer, as interpreter of um, Baroque music uh, from Latin America, the, the big country where I come from, there is not really a division between what is classical, baroque, uh, folk music, traditional music. I think it's it's not really a big big in a big difference as when I came to England, for instance, to London, and I saw many ensembles doing Latin American music, baroque music. They I say, well, it sounds too too clean. It sounds too accurate. Too too well. I think maybe it's a very, I like, I love that, how they do it. But I think that music is seen from the eyes of, of the British people. But if you, if you do the music, if you interpret the music done in your country, from your eyes, really, from your experiences, that will tell you not only the music, not only this, not only the melody, not only the sounds which are clean or not clean, if they're accuracy, if, but also something which is really the interpretation. And I think much more than than much more than a technique. I think music is emotion, and I th I think that music is art, and the art. I think art to be an artist, to be a really artist, is not only to sing a wonderful melody as it's written, but also to to tell the people well this is what I am, right? And well, that's what I learned also here in Europe doing, doing myself this music. So basically you were like performing, if you want to say, instead of singing, you were performing completely because you were like showing part of the culture. And, and, and just going to, 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 to that part, because well, I think so you touched a couple of points that well you were talking about, about uh, the indigenous languages. And also I would like to, if you can tell us a little bit more about these indigenous languages that you use in your lyrics and also well to give us an idea but it's like i would like that you can deep dive about the importance of the preservation of this indigenous background and cultures and and what is the what does that mean to you well yes the thing is i'm not only performing as you said i'm singing really the how it is written the music because intonation and all those things has to be sung as it's written but uh, what you were saying at the beginning, uh, it's uh, that there are two things in this, uh, in this indigenous lyrics, as you say, but also in this music, in Baroque music written in Native American languages, which is what, what does music, what does music used to, to mean for the, for the conquistadores or for the European, for the Occidental civilization? And what is music was was the meaning for the Native American cultures because, as you remember, uh, Enrique, there was a clash. There was a, there were there were two universes against right the Occidental and the the indigenous culture, and also when you when you have this this wonderful music, which is the music that was created in our countries at that time, you have how the the, the Occidental 
or the Spaniard or the Portuguese, they bring their music, but it was written and executed and sung by the Native Americans. So uh, maybe, for instance, uh, uh, one the very first polyphonic work was was written in Latin America is Hanach Pachap Kusikuin in Quichua, and if if you perform or if you or for an European person. That sounds wonderful baroque polyphonic music, which is very clean, very dissonances, fantastic, uh, fantastic ambience. But for the Native Americans, because it's in Quichua, it doesn't mean that. Because for the for the Spaniards, that was a hymn to the Virgin Mary. But for the Incas who were singing this music, there was something behind. It was really a goddess, Pachamama, and that's what a mixed what you say called syncretisms later, which were bringing together two different, um, two different cultures. And uh, I used to, well, my election is to sing music in Native American languages, in indigenous languages, because I think I am from Latin America. Uh, the majority of our, of our people is Native American or is mixed with Native Americans. So that's my identity. And since I am different, I am in a different country. I am in a European country. Uh, I'm also Occidental because I speak many languages and uh, I, I was born in this society, but I want to find myself. And I want also to show something what I can deliver myself, something different, which is to do music in the languages that I speak the language I feel, the language of my parents, of my family, of my ancestors, and also the music that my ancestors were doing uh, 400 years ago. And to bring this, this new vision, this new way of interpretation to the, in this case, to the British audiences, which are used to a very European way of performing, if you want, which is fantastic. But as I say, they see the Virgin Mary in him, but we, we see Pachamama. And Pachamama was not a virgin, she was a goddess, and she had a lot of, a lot of things to give to the nature. So it is much more what you listen, or an Occidental what you think, because uh, the Native American will put another input, which is, well, this means for me the nature, the connection to my gods, to my past, and not necessarily to the Virgin Mary which is Christian, of course, and which is belongs to another culture. Wow, that's, that's, that's very interesting. And in order to all the, you, you were saying, as, as an Argentinian, obviously living in, and working in Germany and UK, you moved to, to Europe, but as a Latin American, what was the challenges you faced when you was uh, doing your career? Well, a lot of prejudices, a lot of prejudices because uh, they will, they will at the very first time they will say, "Well, but you didn't study in Europe. Did you study in Europe? Oh, but you studied in your country. And how is it?" So it's uh, depending, of course, with the persons. Some uh, some people have depending of also in which in which cycles you move in which country. There are maybe England is a bit much more conservative than other countries in uh, regarding to the to the classical music or to the Baroque music, how you have to perform it. Uh, but as I say, I'm a crossover. And nowadays I, I've seen a lot of ensembles like Jordi Sabal, but also the Argentinian um, Garrido, which I have worked also, and I did some workshops in Switzerland and in France, which really the, the approach of, of Latin American musicians to our early music, to our Baroque music, it's different. And uh, maybe that's, uh, it's, not, it's not a cliche real, really, but it's our early music is already announcing the fiesta, this rhythm which later will, will become Maybe in some countries, the salsa, we are already announcing the salsa or maybe the Latin jazz. And that's, that's really something which is, uh, well, it's uh, very tricky for some musicians to learn our rhythm, uh, how is our music written. But I think that's the most important thing to show well. Uh, our music, uh, it's so rich and uh, you cannot really separate which is in my, in, in my vision, which is classical music, which is traditional music, maybe there is, everything is music. So why you should, you should uh, we should separate those genres. And that's maybe, that's the, 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 the answer to your question, um, Roger, because some people think, no, classical music must be like that. 
early music must be like that, jazz music like that. Well, many ensembles in Europe are showing that really they can, they, they become a crossover, right? And that's me. That's why I love this, the idea to put things together, which really can work. Of course, in a very, not everything can, can fit everything, but there are many things that really are, well, quite, um, quite similar, right? Absolutely. Um, before we hit my question, I believe, Roger, you're going to show a video first so we can all, yes, this course. is about, um, also just to, sorry, give the audience a, um, an idea. This is about a um, ensemble, El Parnaso Hispano, which you um, found in Germany is, and also is active in the UK, which I know is instrumental and, and and vocal. So if we could take a quick look at this, and then I'm sure Rafael will tell us much, much more about it. I am Rafael Montero, founder of El Parnaso Hispano. We are an international ensemble dedicated to the performance of early music from Spain and Latin America. The Spanish culture flourished in the 16th century. In this time, there was a wealth of musical creativity in the major cultural centers. And much of this music is only now being rediscovered and published. We bring this wonderful music to new audiences, including music written in Native American languages, for instance, Quechua Guarani, as well as Spanish and Latin. Sounds wow, so beautiful. beautiful. So um, <laughs> I one thing um, that I want you, I would love for you to talk about it, it in general, um, how it was active pre and post pandemic, the mission of the group and the projects you achieved. And then maybe also talk a little bit about Guarani because I that was um, mentioned in the video. And we talked about this a long, long time ago when we first talked about um, Paraguay music at first. So if you could touch on all those hints, like what is Guarani, the mission of this project, what it's accomplished over this time since its inception? Yes, well, what I want to, well, the mission of our ensemble, which is really now in London, because we are singing a lot in England, it's uh, to bring an authentic interpretation of, of the early music of Latin America and especially to to bring the not the vision not seen as as the occidental people as the british people would see that music but to give a vision from the native american eyes how how we re, what this music represent for us because as i said you 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 see a photograph you see a picture of you think of our lady but for us it's really pachamama you see a, a saint a san santiago but for us it's a, a god which was before the spaniards and uh, for instance this the, the work we listened now is hanach pachapusi queen is the very first polyphonic uh, work written in latin america which is really about um, about pachamama about the fruits about the flowers about what she gives to us and uh, that was a devotional a song, a thing which is really very powerful, uh, but also our mission is to to decolonize this music, not to sing as a way as the Spaniards thought Montero, they are, but just to do as a way, so as how it be, it means for us. Maybe not sing in a church, but maybe sing somewhere which is much more connected to Pachamama and to the religion of the pre-Hispanic people. Because I also have done a lot of research about religion, but also homosexuality in the in the pre-Hispanics and the, also the, the role of the woman in the pre-Hispanic societies. Because the woman was also very, very, very free, and as again, this, this clash between these two visions, the pre-Hispanic and the, the Occidental, it created something new, which is 
which we are nowadays as Latin Americans, we are this mixed. And well, uh, one of my projects, uh, well, I, I won a prize last year of in Germany, because the Kunststiftung NRW, for a project I presented about uh, a, a traditional uh, a traditional work, which is vocal from the Catalonian, the very ancient Catalonia, which is El Canto de la Sibila, which I associated with the, with the pandemic. And also I received a scholarship from Germany for a project with um, about art songs in Native American languages, which are um, songs for voice and piano written in Quichua, uh, Aymara, pre-Hispanic poetry, and also Guarani, because Guarani is not only spoken in Paraguay, but also in part of Bolivia and the north of Argentina. And actually where I was born, uh, where I was born in Argentina, the language spoken by the Native Americans there is Guarani. So it's, um, I also learned later, but um, nowadays there is a revival, there is a big interest in, about, about the Native American languages, but when I was a child, not, because it was, it, it, well, people were not really interested because we were, we were not looking at ourselves, we were always looking to Europe but I think nowadays, if we want to find ourselves, who we are, we have to look at ourselves. And only when you know who you are, you really can deliver something very authentic yourself, right? And other things that we are doing is, well, we did the very first concert in the Queen's College in Oxford after the lockdown last year, where I sang secular music found in the Archivos Nacionales de Bolivia in Sucre. And I also sang um, works of a very important composer called Domenico Zipoli, who was, he, he was a very successful composer in Rome, but he discovered his religious um, interest and he decided to become a, a priest and he moved to Cordoba, Argentina, where he died, where I studied. So he died in Argentina and when he was in South America, he was writing a lot of me religious music for the reductions of the Jesuits in Paraguay, Bolivia, and Argentina. So I discovered, I received for many mu musicologists also some works which are written in Guarani of Sipoli, and also an opera, which is the next project. And I'm try, I will also perform an opera written in Native American languages in Chiquitano. And very soon you will uh, also, uh, if you if you follow me later in my in my social media, we are, I'm also doing um, a project of uh, the very first recording of the songs of a composer called um, the Mozart of the Andes, which is Pedro Jimenez Abril y Tirado, a composer of the 19th century, which who was very prolific, and his music is not known yet in Europe. So it's a very big interest about this composer, which is really, he wrote 40 symphonies, and that's why he's called the Mozart of the Andes, and his vocal music is lovely. There's no recording yet of these songs. I did the very first one last year, at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama at the Milton Court. So uh, please follow me and you will know more about this composer later. And uh, yes, that's... Um, so tell um, us, yeah, where we can follow you since you said that, that is our last question. Where can our viewers find you to learn more about you and the great work you're doing? Well, I am in Instagram. Um, I have my Instagram account. Yes, you can follow me where I write about my, uh, I'm docente and musico, and also there are some links to other, some, some things I did, uh, and also a, a website, and I'm also in Facebook, um, where you can follow me there I put for instance today this wonderful program Latin American show which I am very proud to be invited tonight and I have also my website but in in the I put all the time in my social media information and well I am very welcome to everyone who wants to ask questions or wants to join me later or wants to to know more about th this culture I am very delighted to to answer to everyone Everyone who wants also who is curious about this and maybe why not become an expert as me, right? Why not? Well, and hopefully uh, when you will come here to London, let us know. 
I am in October are, there. Huh? I am in two. And are you going to perform something? Are you going to sing here? Yes, I'm. Yes, I'm going to sing at the Embassy of Argentina. I'm going to do um, Baroque music of Cipoli, who, who died in Argentina. He died in Cordoba, where I studied. And we, uh, I'm telling you, a premiere because we have also a concert the 17th December at the Farm Street Church, which is the Jesuit Church of London. We will sing my ensemble, El Parnaso Hispano. We will do a Christmas music of uh, Bolivia, South America, inspired in the Black culture, because as you know, the Black culture is also part of this wonderful mix that, that we have in Latin America, right, Enrique? You know, we are a mix of Native American, Black, people, white people, non-white people. So, and these negrillas, these villancicos, uh, which were, are writ were written in Bolivia and found there, they were only performed in Christmas and the influence of the black culture is really very important. And we also want to show that the very first beginning, these different cultures were interacting and they were creating music as well, right? And you are very welcome to the Farm Street Church, the 17th, uh, December to listen to us, to listen to music from our countries, music in our languages, and how we celebrate Christmas, the Latin American way of celebrating Christmas, which is so different from the British one, right, which everything is so solemn, everything is so, so, oh, what a very nice, no, we like party, and also in this music, you will really like the party, and you're very welcome to follow me in the social media, so I will post, I will keep everyone posted about about, uh, this wonderful music and of course or in the future I, I hope also to do some songs art songs uh, classical songs in Native American languages just show the people how is our culture is how rich our culture our um, our Latin American culture is which are mixed as myself and again that's why we are presenting this music because I am a crossover and I'm also doing crossovers because that's what I am. And that's what Latin Americans we are, right? A crossover of different things, different identities, cultures, lives, experiences. So that's well, it. Well, sounds, definitely, it sounds amazing. Uh, sounds like a good opportunity uh, for people that they can enjoy the Christmas carols from Latin America. And uh, of course, Rafael, we will be in touch uh, in order that, well, you can provide us information and we can invite the audience when you will be here and you were like with these concerts and we have shared with the, your different social media in our comment section. So Rafael, thank you very much for being yeah. with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, oh, I thank you guys because you are fantastic <laughs> and keep on doing this wonderful. Uh, well, maybe let's let last year we talk about other projects and well, I hope, I, I wish you the best. And thank yeah. you very much for this wonderful interview. And follow me in the social media. Uh, you will discover a lot of wonderful music. <laughs> we will so do. Much. Have a wonderful evening. So thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Excellent. So, well, uh, well you, you, you have met Rafael Montero. And, well, now I think it's time to go. No, it's not time to go, right? Uh -oh. Now it's not time. So, well, I have seen that, well, a lot of comments here in the comment section that, well, people that they are saying that, well, it sounds interesting, that, well, Annalise also is very cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And, well, I think so, it was interesting, this part of Pachamama, that, well, uh, I also put the Wikipedia. I know that Wikipedia maybe is not <laughs> like the best uh, source, but it's the first one that I have here. So, well, I, could, I just share about what is Pachamama for people that they are interested uh, to know more about it. So thank you very much also to John that he's saying thank you, Rafael. So, well, we will let you know once we know when Rafael, well, we know that the 17 is going to be here, but well, when we have tickets or something, we will invite you and we will remind you. So save the date. Yes, I think it's time to go with Whitney Nocherino. Um, yeah, no, it was really interesting tonight. And, and what I love about these kind of interviews, especially with indigenous is, um, you know, we're preserving something that's really important. And as Raphael touched upon, um, is kind of looked down upon in a lot of cultures, even um, his own in a sense. So I'm really excited that 
we're doing this kind of work. And this is exactly what I'm teaching right now, the preservation of indigenous culture. So stay tuned. We'll have more people doing that. So moving on and from something. Before yes. before you before you win, Nate. Oh man, you know I what have I a like perfect with... transition, but okay, go. <laughs> yeah, well, it's me. You know me. No, you I know, know what I like is is with beautiful saying how the Europeans and the Latin Americans see the music different here in Europe so mm -hmm. clean and in in Latin America is the fiesta oh totally yeah um there's so many interesting things about that conversation and I'm sure we'll unpack them in future interviews as well because this will be the start of having guests who are of tr um indigenous descent um, or using it. And we've already seen that in previous episodes. So well done to him keeping the culture alive when so many times, um, so many people do so many, throw so many obstacles at you for otherwise. So going in from something a little more old that we preserve to something a little bit more new, heard on the street, your favorite part. And a couple of these words we've seen, oh gosh, like July of last year, not this July. So I repeated a couple, a couple new ones too. The first one, La Burad. So we have to remember, oh, and this is slang from Argentina, if I haven't been clear, and I've not, so I apologize. Um, so in the Southern Cone, in Argentina particularly, um, a little bit Uruguay too, you have, obviously we have like so many um, European, how do I put it? I mean, and I'm talking like post-colonization, influence on the language and it comes at here with, um, I believe it's Italian. Laborar is a way of saying trabajar, camellar, pinchar, which is to work. And that's a little bit of slang that you will find in Argentina. It might not just be Argentina, but that's what I'm focusing on tonight. Um, the second one, it's a risk. Me estás cargando means, are you serious? Are you freaking serious? It could be a less um, offensive way of saying no mames, which could be very strong. I'm choosing the less strong one before anyone reacts. That's kind of like, are you serious? You've got to be kidding me. Um, que quilombo. So anytime we have a sentence that starts with K with an accent and it's not a question, it means like, how do I say it? It means what a something, okay? So in this case, que quilombo is what a mess or something that's so complicated, muy complicado, or que lío, it could even mean. And then the last one, no da, oh my gosh, if I could use this word all the time, actually I do. Um, <laughs> I use it with students all the time, not gonna happen, no da, not appropriate, mm -mm, don't go there, don't think about it. And then some new ones that we haven't seen. So. Que bajón. So this is one I don't believe I've shown. And it means, it's like que lastima. And it means what a shame. Que lastima is like, oh, yeah, it's too bad. What a shame. And then the other two obviously are similar. They mean similar things. Um, so the first, <laughs> okay, this is a risk as well. So chamuyar, whenever we have a word that ends in A-R-E-R -E -R or I-R, it's what we call an infinitive. It's a verb. And all verbs in Spanish, whether they are regular when you dissect them or irregular and in an A-R-E or I-R. So this one, ch chamuyad is, oh gosh, I know I'm going to re receive some, some, some backlash, but it means to seduce or hit on someone. <laughs> <laughs> what I teach us in level four I, I thought of this because I'm teaching right now one of my classes um yeah I know exactly shush um what do you call it las relaciones personales and we talk about coquetear we talk about seducir and and this is what it is to hit on someone or seduce them so un chamullero or chamullera could be a woman is the flirt or the seductor, okay? El o la que coquetea contigo. Maybe when we do like Valentine's Day or something, we can do a little love language using this, but Enrique is into it. You know what? It's so interesting when you see some, when you know people are paying attention <laughs> to what you're saying. It's like, you know, just one or two key words. I, I call it selective hearing, um, but that's it. Again, after the show, don't forget, go to my website, makingspanishsimple.com. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to um, put together some slang from past episodes so that you have nice visual reminders and some recommended reads on my website and Instagram, YouTube. So 
for any of you out there who want some recommended reads, contemporary literature, want to learn some slang, subscribe to my page, hit up my social media, and you will get more than you get in the 10 minutes I can give on this show. So Whitney, we have a question. Oh Here. no. Is un chamullero means es un coqueto? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because Gabriela Aguilera, she was asking here. Oh, okay, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's not yes. me. It's like I'm, I'm reading no, the comments. Anytime so you like, ask me a question, I'm scared. Tengo no. mucho miedo. Okay, you say no, it. No. <laughs> okay, I'm choose. Pointing me. Anyway. So. <laughs> oh, I know what you guys are doing. That's cute. The, well, the anyway, other side. it's the other time side. to the other go side. for some music. Yes. Roger. And for Roger. some music, well, we have our next uh, person, which is a very talented Mexican, and we're going to hear uh, Drian Garcia with the song Tu Cuerpo. Y es tu cuerpo que domina mis sentidos, que me nubla el pensamiento. Imagino mi locura si no me arrepiento. Y no puedo y no quiero olvidarme de ti ni de tu cuerpo, baby. Y es tu cuerpo la novena maravilla, el más bello monumento. Y si lo tengo aquí cerquita, como me caliento.
Well, he is Adrian Garcia, a very good friend for the Latin, of the Latin America show. And well, remember, just you can follow him and also Whitney, I think. So the songs they are, where people they can find the songs that they listen here in the Latin America show. On our playlist on Spotify, just search the Latin America show and we're the only one. So yeah, there you go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And before we go, we have some events that they are coming. Right, Roger? Yeah, exactly. We have some events. Yeah, I'm going to share these from our friends of Latin Indian events. You want to uh, learn salsa? Just follow this link. I will post this. They do some events every Wednesday, 7 to 11. But also, we have a very, very important uh, thing. 3030 challenge celebrating 30 years for 30 days for Children Change Colombia. Well, they celebrate in 30 years and we're asking our supporters or everyone in general to set themselves a 30 day challenge and help us to rise 3000 pounds before the 31st of October. I will leave the links in the, in the, in the Facebook page. So please, if you can just help these amazing friends or from children change colombia okay. thank you very much for that roger remember that well it doesn't matter you don't have to give a lot of uh, uh well you don't have to yeah to provide a lot of money everything helps yeah mm -hmm. every small and one helps. more one more on the friday 24 september uh our friend uh we, we already have it here Sachelis is going to have a live music so I will post all these where there's going to be. I will post it on Facebook. So please, if you want to listen to good music and learn salsa and help children, you know where you find the links in the Facebook page. And also remember to follow our friends from Latin Hit UK because, well, they are have, uh, it, It's a very good show that they have on the radio every Tuesday. And I think yes. I, I met I met the, the 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 girl and she's amazing. Hopefully we can we one invite, of them no? we can invite her. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That could be really good. Uh, let's talk with them and they can tell us a little bit more about the program. Mm -hmm. So it's time to go. So Roger Alarcon. Well, thank you very much. We did it. Well, we just passed four minutes. Yes, and we try to meet more more quick, more light, so everyone enjoy more of the show. Thank you very much. See you next week. Thank you, Royer and Whitney Nuccherino. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. I would ruin next episode, but I'm, I'm, I'm confirming it right now. So stay tuned, um, and I will we'll see you next week. Come rain or shine, join us. Perfect, Whitney. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Remember that the Latin America show is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. London time. My name is Enrique Gelista. It's a pleasure and see you next week.